Welcome everybody. This is Panfor LLC. Let that sink in with Queen Chameleon. Thank you for that, Eric. Welcome, everybody, to Let That Sink In. This is um, Panferware LLC Music Publishing and Placement. I uh, try to, once a week, interview songwriters um, and music industry execs, uh, ask them questions about themselves, how they got into the business, and just uh, what they love, why they love it, and how uh, we can love it, too. So that's what we're all about. I'm Anthony Ferrier owner, founder of Panfortware LLC, music publishing in about three, four years ago. Uh, I pivoted my IT consulting company to music publishing. I read a lot of books, uh, hired a couple of uh, attorneys, wrote up some paperwork, and we have over 60 songwriters now with over a thousand songs ready for placement. Um, Eric uh, Ziegler, uh, give your intro, please. Yeah, my name is Eric Ziegler. I am a sync licensing agent for Pan4 LLC. Um, I basically take the artists that we that we have in our catalog, the songs that we have in our catalog, and I find a new home for them. I get in touch with the music supervisors. I get in touch with the showrunners, the producers, and um, I I I take the songs that we have and I I, I get them to a new home. You know, get a, a fulfill a brief and and. Find them and find them a new home. Yes, sir. You, you're a service. He's a service provider. He provides a service. Yes, sir. <laughs> so today we have a Queen Chameleon uh, uh, artist. Um, Queen, I'm going to be mixing back and forth between your artist name <laughs> and your uh, <laughs> government name. So please forgive me. Um, That's totally fine. <laughs> But, Thanks uh, for tuning in, everyone. <laughs> absolutely. So let's give our intro. Uh, introduce yourself, Queen. Yeah, so uh, my name is Maria. I got the nickname of a chameleon from one of my mentors in college, Ronnie Schiff. She's a Grammy-nominated book publisher who uh, is a, a dear friend of mine, who became a dear friend of mine. And she told me I was a chameleon, that I wasn't just fitting into one box. And that was really interesting to hear and encouraging to hear because – I always thought that, you know, the industry really wants to put you in one place and have you be just either a pop artist or you're just R&B. But I was more than that. I was into a lot of different styles. So she called me a chameleon and that's kind of stuck with me. And I added a little queen on there just to make it fun. So I think everybody's a queen or a king in their own right. And yeah, so I'm a producer and I'm a vocalist and songwriter and artist. And I am very excited to be here today with Pan for Wear. Thank you, thank you. So, thank um, you. so where is your uh, current location? So right now, I'm tuning to you guys from New York City in New York. Ah, the Big Apple. Yeah. Yes, the Big Apple. <laughs> <laughs> and that kind of lends to um, your your repertoire because New York does have so many cultures and genres of music. Um, why why not sample it all? You know. So that's <laughs> exactly cool. yeah yes. so that's great to do that and and not just you know uh you know uh like do a brief and give it a try but you do it well and um that's why we uh we appreciate you here paying for wear out for you know for a couple of years so even before you know you were assigned to us uh we, we've admired you from afar and we've uh we listen to Thank your you music like me. oh yeah you know we listen to your music like like you know, we play we play uh, top forty, and we play uh, Queen Chameleon as part of our Spotify playlist. You know, it's, it's good music wow. that should be on the radio. So, oh, no, thank for you real. So wow. <laughs> for wow. real. Thank you so much. Wow. Thank you so much. Amazing. Uh, yeah, and we love the synergy that you have with um, your co-writers. Uh, some we we have part of our family too, um, and mm -hmm. others. And some we also admire, like your uh, your synergy that you have with uh, Mira Gad. Um, yeah. Excellent, excellent, amazing. Uh, uh, what did I call? I forgot what I called y'all. At one point 
on Instagram. <laughs> I, I, I labeled y'all something like theme, uh, anthem queens or something like that. Because <laughs> yes, that's what you said, anthem queen. <laughs> <laughs> you were just turning out, you know, anthems. Like, I can do it. We can do it. Let's do it. You know, great, great energy. And Thank you so you much. Know, yeah. So um, I don't have my questions in front of me, so we're going to be freestyling for a little bit. I know, I know we don't want to uh, drag out the time. I know um, you have a lot of things happening, which is, you know, you're always on the move, which is great. You know? <laughs> Thank you. We like Thank you. I try to keep busy. Move. Yeah, that's, oh, yeah, that's a good thing. So let's see. We asked who you were. We asked your location. Um, so, oh, okay. yeah, so how did talking you get... about the anthems, I just, I want to jump in really quickly. So we're okay. talking about the anth anthemic music and it, I, I think it's always been um, an important mission of mine to make sure that I'm making music that's just true to, true to emotions, not only that I experience, but what other people experience too. So the motivational music, the lyrics about strength and about moving forward and, and you know, pervading through all of your obstacles and challenges in life. That's something that's been important to me. And I, I've always wanted to make music that spread positive energy. And, and I also make music that is, you know, sometimes um, it's, you know, it's not always maybe positive, positively geared, I would say, but, but definitely a, a release, you know. And that isn't, isn't necessarily a negative thing either, you know. I wouldn't say, um, you know, artists artists don't write positively all the time. A lot of the times it's about breakup and it's about loss and all of these other other things. But I just think it's an expression of who we are. And I definitely look to look to release more music. That's on the positive and uplifting side because I feel like um, and that's at the heart of what I do is at the heart of who I am as a positive, uplifting person. So I enjoy making music of that style and I'm, I'm happy that it resonates with other people. Um, some of the songs that you guys want to talk about today, um, I <laughs> there's a a group of Zumba Zumba heads is what we call them, but they're Zumba, Zumba dancers and instructors, and they have a couple of my songs in their playlist, and they have routines to them, and it's so inspiring to see them working out to some music that they feel uplifts them. I mean, I'm I'm flattered by it and and humbled and grateful that um like the song Never Give Up. I'm grateful that that can inspire women while working out and, and men, you know, to keep right. going and never give up. So it's I'm very thankful for that. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Well, that's the thing. We we like to be around people that can only be themselves. <laughs> you know, you, you can't help mm -hmm. it. You you are who you are, and we, and we enjoy that sincerity. Um, and like you, you said, you know, yeah, we are who we are. Even though the industry, we may think we have to be somebody else, but we are who we are. And I think staying true to who you are is an yes. important way to to continue through this industry because there's a lot of you know turns that you can take and temptations that you can fall into um you know especially if you're new and you're trying to find your way but i think if you always stay true to who you are you'll feel good about yourself at the end of the day and then you'll attract the energy and the collaboratives that are meant for you so i think that that's an important thing for all of us artists to to um convey as ourselves and be proud of who yeah. we are yeah yes. <laughs> I, I agree like you said you you bring yourself out if you try to be something that you're not you know the a and r try to put you in a pigeonhole you know, um, I'll forget her name. Oh, I forget her name. The Canadian rocker, um, great voice, uh, Avril Lavigne. Oh you know, my uh, gosh, they, Avril! They made, <laughs> love her. I love her voice, but you know, I, I don't. Her. They made her a rocker. I believe that really wasn't her. You know, and that kind of burns you out because now you have to portray something that you're not, and it's so much easier just to be yourself. You know. And that mm. for longevity, you got to be yourself. And like you said, with being sincere, some days are good, some days are bad. So you know, uh, break up song every once in a while. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, that's that's that. You're is right. You got to get it out. Got to get exactly. Get so really, <laughs> and leave it there. Yep. Absolutely. Totally. Totally. Um, but, by the way, Eric. Um, I'm I'm freestyling, man. Uh, so let me know if we can get past the half the half an hour point, so we can get to the uh, the song review. We, we don't want to miss any any uh any of this, okay? Yeah, no problem. I got you. No worries. Okay. So um, so the first very first time that we spoke via Zoom a couple of years ago, I feel like it was a couple of years ago. Um, mm -hmm. 
my um my I want to say a person that was working with me at that time was asking about mm -hmm. your self care because he's a very holistic person. Um, mm -hmm. Since you do keep yourself busy, how how do you do with the self care and the the vocal training and things of that sort? Oh my gosh! <laughs> well, to to be completely honest with you guys, um, I like to call it organized chaos. <laughs> I, I love that. Sched <laughs> schedules have never been my forte. Like I just, I don't feel like a disciplined person. However, every single morning I wake up, I write down a list of what I have to do. I put it in order of priority from first to last. I do a meditation in the morning. I write down gratitude. I listen to motivational podcasts. Um, I also, I do a couple of different, I do, I try to do two meditations in one day. There's this wonderful Swedish uh, woman. Her name is Ronya Sebastian and she has great, great meditations. I found her from the wild woman community. Shout out to them. They're absolutely incredible. Um, so there's that, right? And then I try to break my day up and I break it up into exercise, vocal warm ups, um, nutrition, uh, work and productivity. And then, you know, I try to make sure I'm getting out into nature and I take my dog with me, Jakey. He's 14 and he's like the most active 14 year old dog you would ever meet in your life. He's very happy and thriving and he's my best friend. Um, so, you know, I, and I do my, my vocal warm ups also. I try to do them daily. Um, it consists of, I actually have what I call a chameleon chakra warm up. So I start from, you know, the, the crown and then I go all the way down to the root chakra and it's specific warm ups that are that are conducive to that space in, in the face or in the body. So there's there's different special techniques that I have for that. And I'm going to be posting a video about that soon on my YouTube Um I've been meaning to do that. It's just been so busy lately. Um, also, aside from music right now, I've actually um embarked on a new journey to making my own luxury travel business which has been very fun also so um yeah just keeping busy and trying to do things in priority and and making sure that i'm you know keeping up to speed with my health also is it's always a daily challenge but um you know, I'm working on like having that one time every day where I eat and that one time every day where I exercise and that one specific time, you know, but like things come in last minute things that I have to do, especially in the sink world, right? You know, you get a brief and it's, oh, I have to have this in by five o'clock today. And then everything gets pushed to the side and pushed back. And it's, it's challenging part. It's a challenging part of that, that part of the synchronization industry is meeting those expectations. So, um, you know, definitely figuring out how to maneuver everything else and uh, have it be in cohesion with your life and with deadlines. It's definitely a thing. So um, I think that um, it's it's definitely something that I'm always trying to get better at, for sure. <laughs> no problem. Well, from here, we can tell that you are, you're, you're, you're on your way. If you feel you're not there yet, you're on your way. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, let's see here. In regards to the brief, so yes, um, that is exactly why I uh, I took Eric in into the family because I did mm. try to do the public sign side and the sing side at the same time and in two members um, where we would just dive into briefs with three day turnarounds. Mm -hmm. And it was it was insane, mind blowing. You know, twenty briefs, three days, yeah. and you have to <laughs> yep. listen to the music, and you got to narrow down the music. You have to make sure that the music fits, not just that you like it, you know, because it's bias, of course, we're human. But if it actually yeah. works to the brief, and all that is very nerve wracking. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, that's why <laughs> that's why we got at it. <laughs> so you were, you're right about that. But um, we'll yeah. Can I on. can I ask you a question real quick? I wanted to make sure I asked it. Yeah. Um. You said you're you're kind of starting your own travel business. Yeah. Um. Are you using your own music for that? For like advertising for that, or are you uh kind of out outsourcing it? Yeah. So no, I definitely. Thank you for asking that. I definitely plan to tie the two together. So for example, um, 
you know, I, I plan to have specific playlists for specific journeys that I'm going to be sending people on. So I'm going to have music that's conducive to vacations and I'm going to send that playlist along with a couple of other packaged elements to clients so that it kind of goes together. And then, yeah, if I, de if I have promotional videos, I would definitely use my own music and music that I've used um, in collaboration with others. And that's definitely something that I'm, yes, I'm looking for th that synchronicity. I, I always want to apply, you know, I like for me, the chameleon ethos that I've constructed from um, the singing and songwriting and then doing my, my podcast chameleon cuts where I was interviewing different professionals about their experiences in the business and, you know, whatever business background that they came from and, you know, songwriting and just all the different things that, that encompass who I am. I mean, I am a chameleon. I don't just, I'm not just a singer. I love to do other things as well, as I'm sure you guys do too, you know, um, you know, Eric's not just somebody who speaks to music supervisors and submits songs for placement. Anthony's not just somebody who's into artist development and, you know, music. I mean, you guys have so many other roles that you attain in your daily lives. And so, um, I've always known that I love to do different things. So rather than fighting it, I just ultimately decided to embrace it and embrace this chameleon in me and, um, share with others that I do feel that to live, truly live an enriched life, we do need to express ourselves in all these different facets of, you know, um, creation and experience, you know, and, and have it be, you know, like as an individual, have individual experiences and then also experiences with others. So my travel business is just another, another uh, facet of that. So I'm definitely planning to make the two mesh, make them go together <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Cool. Thanks, Eric. So you definitely um send us the link when you get a chance so we can promote that. Uh, oh, I will. Travel. Yes, it's called Lux Quest yeah. Travel. So it's luxquest.org. L-U-X-Q-U-E-S-T.org. Oh, nice. And I forgot. Um, thank you for c contributing to our uh, forum. Uh, one of the first ones. Um, and also after we're done, I'm going to. Uh, grab the uh, your podcast link so that I can RSS feed into our form. So whenever your podcast episode comes out, it goes to our form automatically, and then it goes to our main website, and then we shoot it out to the over twenty thousand people that are not oh, bots. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> absolutely. Um, so uh, back to the Bruce and placements. Um, we, um, we we know that we know that you do a lot of placements. When I say placements, I mean you work with other uh, co-writers as well as uh, sync. Um, uh, mention a couple of placements and syncs that you uh, had already. Yes, yeah, so um, I work with I work with different companies and different artists. So um, some of which were for Amaretto di Serono, and then also uh, some placements with Bratz Dolls, and then also um, Coast uh, Makeup Line, I believe, and then uh a couple of other yeah a couple of other things and then i also am a partner with native instruments so i produce vocal sample libraries for native instruments and they're all available for purchase they're royalty free and they're all available on sounds.com so i basically produce all different types of sample libraries vocal samples that all producers can use and manipulate to their liking for their own pieces and i don't edit or clean anything everything is very dry very raw so that producers can can mix them and add all types of effects and do everything that they want for whatever project that they have. So my my packs are very diverse. Um, in my career, I've sung in 16 languages. So a lot of my packs are, um, they have different themes to them. Um, one of which was featured in Music Connection magazine, that's Voices of the Gods. And that um, I have some samples in Italian, I have some that are Greek influenced and I also have a Viking pack. I have a couple of Viking packs that are in, Scandin in Scandinavian languages such as Old Norse, uh, Swedish and Icelandic uh, and Danish. So I do a couple of different things and there's some opera packs and there's some rap and then there's there's all different types of stuff. There's a little bit in there for everybody. Um, my most recent pack that I released was called Electro Pop Vintage Samples and I just released that last Friday and that was more inspired by uh, The Weeknd and that sort of disco-y retro yet modern sound. So that's 
that's definitely a pack to look out for. And then, yeah, you know, I, I had put together an entire series of um, vocal samples for Women's History Month. I put together three packs. And because I was so busy with my, my travel organization, I wasn't able to get together the demos and to release it properly. But I'm probably just going to do it and just do it a little bit late um, this year because I definitely want to get them out there. But like I said, you know, the planning and the prioritizing, it's its tough. It's, it's a challenge. So, <laughs> and then that between collaborating, you know, and doing um, writing sessions, you know, I work with producers all around the world. Uh, thanks, thanks to Zoom, you know, and to Google Drive, we're able to collaborate on live documents and in video chat simultaneously. And um, it's a blessing. I also work with um, Susan Simonson and Marissa Di Blasio, two of the producers, somebody who I love working with and keep coming back to. Um, I love the Sync Summit community run by Mark Freezer. They're fantastic also. And then I also work uh, very often with uh, Flavia K. She is, uh, her artist name is Duck the Bass. And she's been the person that I've been working with most uh, consistently lately because we just love working together. And um. Thankfully, our plays seem to be getting a lot of traction on Spotify. So um, I feel fortunate and we're just trying to keep going. And yeah, that's that's pretty much I think I went off on a little tangent a little bit. I forgot the question. I apologize. No, not at all. You, you hit all of the points. <laughs> you, you hit them all. That was good. Um, okay. well, but you Great. did an, have an inter. Oh. So you opened up a very interesting topic, though, because um, as Eric mm -hmm. um, speaks about when he uh, goes to um, different events and he's privy to a lot of things with his um, dual hats of uh, music uh, supervision path that he's on, as well as a sync agent for us, um, he come across, comes across a lot of things where uh, sample packs mm -hmm. on the other side is not always uh, put in a good light. So right. it's refreshing. It's re refreshing to see that you, as a creator of sample packs, you make that available, which is a great thing, you know. And and I like the fact that you make it raw, so that it is unmixed, so that the person can grab it, mix it accordingly to their project, which is awesome. Um, right. But how do you feel about the debate about how some music supervisors don't like? samples or familiar sounds that can be used more than once yeah i think i you know i understand the controversy behind it but at the same time um i'm a vocalist in the industry and it's like you know i i have to do different things to be creative to keep myself inspired and and also to to keep myself active and keep producing things and to earn revenue um you know this is an industry where you have to be creative and you have to try different things and honestly for me making the samples on sounds it's, it's like my playground like i can make samples in any style i want like i have a vocal pack that's called voices of the mermaids and i made two volumes of them and then i have another one that's voices of the chakras where i'm using different frequencies um and i use an oscillator and meditated with crystals while I did it. So it's like, I, you can do whatever you want. Now, as far as the debate and the controversy goes, my response to that is, listen, like, you know, producers are going to take my vocals and they can recreate them and they can do things to make them so like what one producer does is never going to sound similar to what another producer does with a sample. And I think that um, any knowledgeable or savvy producer that's going for a sync placement, you know, probably most likely already understands that controversy and knows that, hey, you know, I can use a royalty free sample. However, I'm going to have to chop it. I'm going to have to EQ this. I'm going to have to put a filter here. I'm going to maybe compress this and I'm going to maybe use, a, you know, a reverb or some time based effect that's going to help this sound unique and, you know, uh, to each his own. So I think that that's pretty much just how I feel about about that, you know, and um. My samples are so custom and they're always so new. And I, I think that, um, you know, also different people who who utilize my packs, they know that they can contact me also for custom work as well. Um, I have a profile for that up on Sound Better. And then I'm also easily reachable through my DM on Instagram and my email address. So, yeah. No, that was, that was okay. So that was the answer. Eric, make a note of that. That was that was the answer. For the most part, I mean, even if a new producer just phoning it in, like a better words, and he just samples, takes the loop, hundred percent, and just plays it, 
he's mm-hmm. not going to do it the same way the next new producer does because everybody has their own interpretation of something. So right. that is a, it's, that's an excellent argument to stand on for that when we do talk to music supervisors, we can help them to understand. Because sadly, not all of them are musicians, you know? Mm-hmm. So they, they, don't, correct, they don't understand. Correct. Yeah. Everybody's just worried about a lawsuit at the end of the day, exactly. I think, you know, that's exactly. kind of what it comes down to. But um, <laughs> yeah, you know, I think that, um, again, if you manipulate it and, you know, there's right. ways around it, there's ways to do things to make it sound unique. And, you know, right. that's pretty much that's pretty much it. Right. So I, it's funny. I um, There's an organization called the SCL, the Society of Composers and Lyricists. And I, mm. um, when I was living in Hollywood, I reached out to them and um, I asked them if they would share my pack to their page. And I got a message back from, from uh, one of the administrators. And he was like, you know, I'm very sorry, but this is kind of antithetic to what we do. And yeah. you know, I'm not comfortable sharing this. He was like, you know, and he had that kind of response. And I was like, Oh, I was like, well, on, honestly, I was like, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get my name out there because I would love to collaborate with composers like you. And this is what I'm trying to do. So that's why I'm making packs like this, right. because, you know, you guys can be hard to reach and you guys can, you know, only work with people that, you know, who's somebody who knows somebody, you know, and so on and so forth. Like we all know that that's the way it works in this business. To be honest, right. I never really got hired because somebody just liked my voice. I got hired because somebody knew somebody who worked with me or like my boy it's always been like that for me you know um so so that was my response to him and he was like well he was like you know what i i really do love your your packs though like they're wildly diverse and i i would let's meet in person let's meet for coffee and let me see how i can help you and so i met with him in person and it was fantastic uh it, it was he we ended up working together and he helped me to get involved with the SCL and volunteer and have a membership and um he became a mentor of mine his name is uh Jonathan at Scoresmith Productions and he's a fantastic fantastic person but it was but yeah so again to add that controversy that was my you know that was definitely another back blow for being a loop producer but right. I mean, look, like this is the music industry. You've got to do what you've got to do to 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 make your bread and make your ends meet. And you have to adjust and pivot, correct, and chameleon. Yeah. (laughs) Exactly.